the introduction is actually the introduction to a book by Inquest of the Canon by this guy, John Michelle. He died a few years ago. He probably died 10 years ago, unfortunately. I'd love to have met him. But he was really one of the first people to start bringing all these coincidences together in terms of the size of the sun, the earth, the moon, and how it tied into sacred geometry and its place in the literature of philosophy. So it's important from that, that uh, perspective to take this part in. We'll move straight to the first part of the book. First chapter, modular arithmetic. Okay, what is it? So we're all familiar with uh, a clock or a watch. Uh, and most of us will know that there are 12 numbers around the clock. 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then when we go past 12 o'clock to what is known in the 24-hour clock as 1,300 hours, we're back to 1. And so that is essentially what's called mod 12, i.e. there's a circle of 12 numbers. And mod 9, which is basically inherent to the decimal system of number, is what I use as the basis for understanding the numerical structure of things. So instead of a clock with 12 numbers on, just imagine a clock with nine numbers on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's through this lens that I've been able to find some rather startling and yet elegant information. So very simply to also illuminate a small trick when trying to determine what the mod nine answer is for a larger number, let's say. So for example, you take the number one, 123. So the digits 1, 2, 3. Now the quick way to get the mod 9 answer, i.e. what time is it on a 9 hour clock, is simply to add the digits up. In this case it's 123, so it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. And essentially what I've found is that by looking through this lens we can start to see that the numerical structure of everything works according to a very specific system where these numbers are working in pairs and in specific groups. Chapter 2, uh, here we see the visual of what is essentially the multiplication tables for each of the numbers, 1 to 8, and looking at their mod 9 results. So if you're looking at 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 1 is 3, etc. And you work your way around to the 9. And obviously 10 times 1 is 10, which is 1 mod 9. And you can get that by adding the 1 to the 0. And you can see that it makes a nonagon, and it flows in a clockwise direction. And now if you look at the 8 times table, using the mod 9 lens, we see that 8 times 1 is 8, times 2 is 16, so 1 plus 6 is 7. 3 times 8 is 24, so 2 plus 4 is 6, etc, etc. And you work your way around and you see that actually it makes the same geometry as the 1. And that was quite a surprise. And then I discovered that basically the 2 and the 7 are paired in their same geometries, 4 and the 5 and the 3 and the 6. And so they're paired in their geometries, but they're also reflective because the 1 goes clockwise and the 8 goes anti-clockwise. The 2 goes clockwise, the 7 goes anti-clockwise. And the other thing to take away from this particular visual is that six of the numbers, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, touch all nine parts of the circle. Whereas the 3 and the 6 just make these triangular figures and oscillate between the 3, 6 and 9. 